Hello, hello, more Dimmers here and welcome back to Chess of Legends 2020 and today I would like to show you the game from round 8 uh, and the game between two leaders. So uh, we have Magnus Carlsen who's gonna play as white and his opponent Jan Nepomnasi who's gonna play as black. Both of the players won all the seven matches so far, uh, so this is why they are leaders. Uh, and without further ado, let's see what just happened on the board. This is the game number two, because in the game number one we had a draw and this is game number two. At the end of the video I will tell you about the other games and how it all ended. Uh, we have D4 by Magnus Carlsen, knight to f6, c4, g6, knight to c3 uh, and now bishop to g7 that would be king's indian defense however another popular uh, opening here is d5 greenfield defense knight to f3 bishop to g7 c takes to d5 knight takes to d5 and now e4 kicking the knight and as a knight uh, made already two moves that would not be you know very smart uh, to still jump with the knight and lose more tempi so uh, black just gonna exchange this knight for knight on c3 uh, we have b takes on c3 and now c5 attacking the center all of this is the main line so very very well known by both of the players rook to b1 uh, we have also castle bishop to e2 preparing to castle as well c takes to d4 c takes to d4 and now queen a5 with check bishop to d2 Queen takes on a2, so now black gonna have uh, two connected passed pawns, which are very dangerous. However, first black of course have to solve all the problems with the very strong center of white. That is the main problem, and it's not uh, that easy. Uh, we have castle played by white, and now bishop to g4. It's still the main line, and now what white usually play the main line is bishop to g5 with the idea of weakening the the pawn structure so after h6 of course um, pawn on e7 cannot be taken because a rook can attack the bishop uh, and make very nice skewer take the the pawn on e4 and then this pawn uh, would be just you know the, the the very isolated pawn and very easy target for black so white would have a very bad position so usually in this position uh, bishop to e3 retreats is played uh, and the game can continue uh, this way however Magnus Carlsen has a slightly different idea uh, very similar but different bishop to e3 first here is the idea so he doesn't want to weaken the pawn structure um, uh, in front of the king uh, but first play bishop on e3 and let's see why knight to c6 this is of course well known line as well d5 knight to a5 uh, and only now bishop to g5 and I will show you one of the lines it's very very interesting case uh, which I don't fully understand um, but the one of the main lines is b6 not h6 kicking the bishop or something but b6 and after bishop takes on e7 uh, rook f to e8 this bishop actually can be defended with d6 and now believe me or not this is considered as one of the most drawish uh, continuation of the greenfield defense 94 percent of the games here ended with the draw so as you see black has two connected past pawns white have you know very advanced d pawn uh, and is considered as a draw 94 percent of the games ends with the draw nepo doesn't go for the you know drawish variation and he plays queen on a3 defending e7 this way we have rook to e1 and now the main line again the main line is bishop takes on f3 and after bishop f3, queen d6, queen e2, uh, bishop e5 and g3, uh, we have interesting position. And interesting because only 60% uh, of this position were drawn. The games in this position were drawn. Uh, and now interesting, uh, who is better? White won 20% of the games and black won 20% of the game. So how this is so different without the advanced, you know, past pawn uh, 
I, I don't really understand. I'm not the Greenfield defense expert. So if you know anything about these variations, you know, uh, leave the comment. I'm very interested. I would like to learn more about that. But for me, this is more drawish, you know, um, than the variation I just show you first. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, but now we have kind of novelty. So uh, Nepo play bishop to c3 attacking the rook and it's pretty interesting because what to play now what would you play uh, you know as white for example if you move the rook to f1 you're gonna lose the all the initiative definitely not the best idea uh, to continue from the other hand uh, if for example you play something like knight to d2 defend this way it also solve a lot of problems uh, of of black of course the bishop is under attack however after bishop to d7 let's say uh, bishop g4 and queen on d6 this uh, position is pretty okay for for black they don't really have any problems to solve um, and then can easily continue uh, the game uh, however very interesting uh, would be the the move knight to d4 uh, actually sacrificing the, the exchange but is that a sacrifice actually not uh, and it's very difficult to actually uh, calculate all of that so probably that would be you know great for the for the standard time control but in the rapid it's it's too complicated now uh, black probably would just take the bishop uh, and then the rook could take on e2 and uh, the game could continue however it's very interesting what happening after a bishop takes the rook on e1 because now we have bishop to g4 and this bishop gonna be trapped it's not easy to actually defend actually it's not uh, even possible to defend because after bishop to c3 if the bishop tries to retreat knight b5 with the attack on the on the queen and also on the on the bishop so queen to c5 and now bishops can improve the position so bishop to e3 with the attack on the queen queen still has to defend the the bishop uh, so queen to c4 and then bishop e2 kicking the queen even further to c8 and of course after rook to c1 the bishop uh, you know gonna collapse and uh, white gonna have the pair of bishops uh, against the rook so definitely white gonna have very very comfortable game if bishop to b4 is even worse because after knight on b5 this queen cannot defend the, the bishop anymore so it's just you know uh, fall instantly and finally if black tries to play something like queen to c5 is actually the best uh, move in this position if black decide to take the the rook on e1 which of course was was not the greatest move however this this would be the best option uh, if the queen um, takes the the bishop now the the knight's gonna fall so bishop to e3 probably and after knight to c4 uh, queen e1 knight to e3 uh and yes white gonna have the the two minor pieces for the rook uh but this is the best what black could get uh, and try to play with this uh connected past pawn but it's definitely very difficult to play uh for black so definitely knight to d4 is very very interesting idea but as i said black can simply take the bishop and uh, all of this calculation and complicated lines you know uh would be just wasted if we can say that uh, magnus plays some more practical move queen to d3 attacking the the bishop and actually pinning that bishop because uh if bishop takes the rook then of course the the queen is hanging we have rook f to c8 defending that that bishop so the queen can uh, move somewhere freely we have rook e to d1 uh, and now b6 so now the knight can go somewhere as the rook uh, was watching at b7 uh, h3 kicking the bishop bishop to d7 and now rook d to c1 so magnus made uh, two moves with the rook but this is very sneaky move uh, and it's quite strong and black has to be very precise what would you play as black for now how would you defend that position it doesn't look so bad yet however uh, black believe me or not but has to be you know very very precise so bishop on b4 defending e7 because this pawn is attacked uh, and this is the actually probably only the way uh, to continue also uh, black asking to exchange the queens uh, and after queen on a6 
let's say probably that would be the best and after bishop to d6 uh, the position is pretty solid uh, and the game can continue uh, with the bishop on d6 it's 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 pretty solid position for black so that's the way to play however uh, nepo defend e7 another way by playing f6 uh, and he actually uh, weakened the pawn structure in front of the king and this can be uh, very dangerous especially against magnus carlsen but how to exploit that uh, so Magnus Carlsen tries this way first retreat with the bishop bishop to d2 and keep in mind that the bishop is attacked three times already and defended only twice so black has to react somehow uh, bishop to b4 is not possible as the as the bishop would be attacked twice so bishop to b2 uh, and now rook to c8 rook to c8 and queen a6 with the attack to a7 and it's very tricky. This is actually part of Magnus Carlsen's uh, plan because what black can play now? Uh, defend that pawn, for example, with the rook to, to c7. It doesn't look great because bishop to f4 with the attack on the rook and then rook doesn't have, you know, much squares to go. So probably queen a2 with the attack on the rook would be the option. And after rook to d1, moving the rook... Um, bishop c8 attacking the queen uh, queen would have to retreat and then the rook can escape however white can play d6 and here is the problem because if black plays something like like e5 for example uh, then this pawn definitely gonna attack um, and promote uh, to the queen with the attack on the on the bishop so it's not possible uh, e takes on d6 is actually forced queen to d6 and look at this the king is open now so this f6 move was very very dangerous nepo definitely doesn't like this variation it just looks very bad so he played queen to a2 first with the with the attack on the on the rook he wants magnus to move the rook uh, and then continue his uh, his game however magnus has different idea of course he could just defend them the rook and this is actually the best move in the position but he still wants to keep the initiative so he sacrificed the exchange we have rook to b2 queen to b2 and now queen a7 with the attack on the bishop if nepo moves the bishop then of course queen to e7 and now this pawn gonna have the support of the queen and gonna win the game so uh, another way is to defend that bishop so we have queen to e1 with check king h2 and now queen a4 and um, defending the bishop and now feel free actually to pause the video and find the only winning continuation for white because you know it's easy to sacrifice the exchange uh, for the initiative however there is only one way to win that game uh, while i enjoy my cup of tea ready the only way the only way actually to win the game is bishop to d1 deflecting the queen the point is uh if the queen is deflected, this is what uh, Nepo actually choose, uh, then we will see what just happened and I will just show you uh, what will happen if the queen want to defend the bishop. So uh, let's say queen to b5 uh, and after knight to d4 attacking the queen, queen has nowhere to go. So queen to c4 is forced and now the bishop gonna fall and after queen to c7, uh, it's forced actually to exchange and this is the best what black actually can get from that position if trying to to defend the, the bishop so of course it's uh, two bishops against the rook so uh, it should be you know uh, easily win by white uh, however uh, nepo tries something else he want to have the advantage of the uh, being up the exchange so he plays queen to d1 uh, and after queen to d7 queen to c2 defending the rook the problem is this line is also losing you can actually pause the video one more time and try to find the winning continuation uh, for white while i enjoy my cup of tea one more time ready this is a uh, pretty tricky because if you think that you can win with the with taking the the pawn actually 
you are losing because after queen to c7 with check uh white are actually forced to exchange the queens uh, and black gonna play with the uh, you know being exchanged up with this passed pawn uh, and with the king close to the center and it's much better for black so that would be losing and uh, magnus played you know the only winning move here uh, not the only because d6 is also winning uh, but he played queen to e6 uh, and after king to h8 d6 after so this way or another d6 is involved of course uh, and now d7 is coming or d takes on e7 is also coming you cannot just you know exchange the queens because now queen they can take to e7 uh, and now this pawn gonna gonna win the game there are no tricks there are no checks anymore so uh, this is completely winning so black play e takes on d6 we have queen to f6 with check king g8 and now bishop h6 threatening the checkmate uh nepo retreat with the queen queen c7 so uh the rook now controls the eight rank and the queen controls seven rank but it's not enough queen to e6 with check king h8 and after knight to g5 jan nepomniashi resigned the game and he resigned uh because he can do nothing against the the knight to f7 and then knight to d8 and that's gonna be a checkmate so for example d5 with check g3 uh and now rook f8 of course uh, the bishop can take it and anything else like let's say d4 then as i said knight to f7 king g8 knight d8 with check again and now if king to h8 of course we have a checkmate and if queen to f7 we also gonna have a checkmate this way so this is why after knight to g5 nepo just resigned uh, the third game ended in a draw and then in the in the fourth game uh, nepo actually managed to win and force armageddon against magnus carlsen magnus carlsen play as black uh, and he managed to draw the game so uh, magnus carlsen actually won that encounter and got two points uh, and nepo got one point and here are the standings after round eight so as you see magnus carlsen 22 points uh, won all the matches Jan Nepomniashi lost one match in the in the Armageddon but also won a couple of, of, of matches uh, in Armageddon as well uh, and Anish Giri and Peter Spiedler gonna play in the last round uh, so that's gonna be pretty interesting but probably both of them gonna qualify to the semi-finals because Vladimir Kramny gonna play against Magnus Carlsen so it's very difficult to imagine that Vladimir just you know win against Magnus Carlsen get three points 15 points and and then Peter Fiedler don't get even a single point that's uh, very difficult to actually imagine uh, Vasil Ivanchuk uh, Boris Gelfand Peter Leko Vishian and Ding Liren doesn't have uh, um, chances actually uh, to qualify anymore even mathematical chances so yeah these are the standings and as always if you want to support my channel press like or unlike if you don't like this video and you still want to support the channel uh, and you don't want to miss any other content quality content uh, of this tournament and other games press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one